प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह कंशा महाराज निजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे सुप्रीम ओमाइडी आर बलवेद कंशा महाराज द पाथ मेक योर टू आर लिबरेशन our dear Puja Guruji, <coughs> Puja Santo and all of you Hari Bhaktos, Jai Swami Narayan. Yuva Sabha Course 4, between the ages of 18 to 45, in the language of English, date February 23rd, 2019. As we continue and learn about different aspects of Gunathyan Swami, his Vato, Pujya Swami narrates the Vat regarding how to perform our duties and how to stay aloof from everything else. And we'll learn in this lecture, U.S. Above 4, exactly Swami's intentions behind this Vat. Swami Narayan Hare, Swami Narayan Hare. Perform worldly duties physically but remain mentally aloof. And if they try to merge with the mind, use spiritual wisdom to renounce them. Sadguru Gunatitan Swamini Vato, Prakarn 1, Vat 234. Again, I want to read it one more time, and then we'll understand it in depth. Perform worldly duties physically. Meaning, everything that we do, may it be walking, talking, greeting, may it be uh, going to our work, going to school, may it be socializing, etc., so on and so forth. Do it physically. But remain mentally aloof. You're probably thinking, how is that possible? Don't you need to engage your mind somehow, some way, in order to do that activity? And if they try to merge with the mind, Use spiritual wisdom to renounce them. Meaning, if they try to come inside of us, what is they and how can they? That's what we'll learn today. Then, use spiritual wisdom to remove them from our mind. There's three points from this talk that we can easily see. One is how to perform worldly duties. Two is how should one not perform worldly duties? And three, the benefits and losses from it. Swami has also mentioned in this vat that worldly dealings are like compared to the toilets of Surat. From this we can understand worldly duties, worldly dealings are kind of anything and everything besides God-related duties or God-related activities. May it be politics, or may it be business, or may it be stock market, or may it be even schooling, or may it be any other kind of philosophies, or any other kind of education, or may it be socializing, anything and everything outside of God-related, even we can say Satpurush-related, activities would be considered to be worldly dealings. Now, also in Sadguru Gunatitan and Swami Vat, Swami has also said, how are these worldly dealings like? Well, they're like the toilets of Surat. In those days, I want to probably narrate a hundred plus years ago, Surat is a city in uh, Gujarat, western India, uh, Gujarat is a state in India, and there, their toilet system was very, very awful. It was, uh, right now we have modernized uh, usage of water, and that's how 
the system works but before it was just dug up in uh, deep uh, you can say holes and the system was very poor the sanitary uh, sanitary wise and overall uh, it was very awful just like how one cannot get anything or one cannot benefit anything from a, a toilet in the same way by performing worldly dealings one cannot ever benefit, meaning one cannot ever walk on the path of God. That's what Swami is saying, comparing it to. We do not have to let go of worldly duties, but we have to learn the method of performing the duties. Meaning just like how we have to go to school, just like how we have to go to college, just like how we have to go to work. Now, you can go there for the sake of going there, but if you do not properly, with technique, use your mind to engage in that activity, then it will not be done properly. In the same way, we have to do everything since we live in the world. May it be a sadhu or may it be a householder. It doesn't matter. Everything has to be done. But... It has to be done in a certain technique so that Bhagwan or God himself, we can also worship him. The problem occurs when we engage ourselves in worldly duties, so much so that we engross our mind inside of it. Due to that, we tend to forget Bhagwan. Due to that, we tend to forget his Satpurusha's Agna. And from there, we slowly but surely drift away from satsang. That's why Swami has said this. It's, it's more a, a talk, um, a, if we can look at it, His compassionate nature is seen. And Swami is showing us that He does not want anyone to drift away from satsang. Due to that, He is showing us a technique. He is giving us an awareness that makes sure, just like how a grandpa would give a small awareness message to his grandson. You know, make sure not to do this or this will happen. In the same way, Swami is saying that make sure, yes, you have to perform the worldly duties, but make sure not to perform them with a completely engrossed mind. And if so, something does happen, then make sure to remove it with spiritual wisdom. Swami's message is very clean and cut. But when put on the practical scale of actually performing this vat or actually engaging in and applying it into our life, it's actually very difficult because it's kind of like diving into the ocean without getting wet. How could you do that? How can someone dive into the ocean and not get wet? Well, there's something called a wetsuit that is made and due to that wetsuit actually it's such a, a tough skin that if worn one can literally one skin would not even get even the slightest drop of water touched by the ocean because of that suit it's it's a form of protection in the same way this vat is in a form of a protection for all of us by reminding us that yes you have to stay in the ocean, but make sure to wear that suit and then dive in the ocean so you do not get wet. Moving on. <clears throat> the people of the world perform their duties differently, and the followers of Bhagwan Swamiran perform it differently. What is considered to be worldly duties? The body, the relatives of this body, or to maintain one's body Whatever activities we are doing for the mentioned above is considered to be worldly duties. Simply, if we take care of our body, anything that we do with our body, that's worldly duties. Anything to do with the relatives of this body, that's worldly duties. And anything to maintain our body physically, take care of it, that's also considered worldly duties. Worldly duties is like riding a camel. It is very difficult to sit on a camel. If one does, 
not know how to sit properly, one may damage a body part. Meaning, horse riding is very easy, but camel riding is actually very difficult. And only those who are skilled and those who have practiced can actually ride a camel without becoming uh, hurt in any way. Similarly, the, from this example, if one does not know how to engage in worldly duties, then one may get hurt, not physically, but mentally, one may drift away from satsang. That's how worldly duties are. Perform worldly duties physically. Great Satpurushas like Goparan Swami, Gunatitanan Swami, or Puja Guruji have the ability and understanding to perform all duties, but they stay and remain different from the world. They do not have any tension or stress for the work they do, or are doing, or will do. What is the reason for this? Well, those who perform activities while engaging their mind completely without keeping the awareness of God experience excitement and depression very often. Meaning, great Satpurushas like Gopan Swami, Gunatitanan Swami, Puja Guruji, they have an understanding and an awareness. And due to that, no matter how much work they perform, no matter what duties they do, they do not have any kind of tension or stress for that particular work. How can this be proven? How can we know? How can, how, how can this be identified? We'll learn very soon. But as for their level of understanding, as per their spiritual, you can say, height, we can understand that and measure it from ourselves that if we hold some kind of tension or stress in our mind regarding a worldly duty, then it would be considered that it has penetrated our mind. And some way, somehow, our connection with this God is broken in some way. But great Satpurushas like Muktanan Swami Goparan Swami, Gunatitanan Swami, Arpuja Guruji, they have such kind of an awareness that there is no way that that tension or stress comes inside of their mind and they're able to easily do the duty and come out and stay engrossed in God at the same time. It's a spiritual level which if practiced one can also reach by the grace of Maharaj and his Ekantik Satpurush. Now what is considered to be pravurti or pravurti meaning activity? Now, Swami here gives an example from the Vachnamrut Kadrada, first chapter, 32nd. A small paragraph I want to read, and then we'll further analyze. For example, birds leave their nest to gather food, but after gathering their food, they always return to their respective nests at night to rest. Never do they forget their own nests and return to another bird's nest. Similarly, after feeding on discourses, talks, devotional songs related to God, devotees of God also return to their nest in the form of God to rest. Again, animals, birds, and in fact, all creatures return to their respective homes to rest after feeding. People also travel far and wide for their work, but only when they return to their home do they rest peacefully. Also, just as a bird returns to its nest after feeding, do all you... Now Bhagwan is kind of giving like a... He's kind of remarking in a strong way. Do all of you also return to, your, you, to rest in your nest in the form of God? After feeding on and... After feeding on in the form of discourses, devotional songs related to God... Do you come back to your nest or do you rest somewhere else? From this, Maharaj is just saying that just like how people in the world go back to, uh, go to work, go to school, go somewhere else, and after coming back very tired, when only they return to their home, they feel at peace. 
in the same way, when we come to Mandir here, we perform Bhajan Bhakti, Kirtan Bhakti. We listen to discourses. We do many God-related things. But even after that, even after doing that, the very purpose of doing that, Sansamagam may it be may it be doing kirtan bhakti, may it be performing bhajan, may it be doing seva, is to actually remember the form of God. Now Bhagwan is kind of giving us awareness that after doing all this, do you come back to the form of God or do you go elsewhere? Meaning, does your mind stay focused on Bhagwan? Or do you kind of just do it for the sake of doing it and then kind of go your own way? You know, this is actually a very important lesson that it's kind of becoming habitual in satsang where we come to Mandir, perform the darshan of Bhagwan, do a little seva, listen to a little katha, and then eat prasad and then socialize a little and depart back to our home. But the very fruits of doing all those things are to, is to remember Bhagwan's form. Now Bhagwan is kind of reminding us and telling us, did you know this? That this is not the end point. After doing all these things, your end point is to go back into the form of Bhagwan, to remember his form. Are we doing this? Bhagwan is asking. If not, then it's time to start. If not, it's time to at least make an effort, a small stepping stone in our life, to sit with the idol of Bhagwan and remember and memorize its every curve, Bhagwan's every curve, Bhagwan's every, you can say, Ang or body part, and from there, tilchin, from there, upon doing our duties, may it be walking, talking, writing, reading, uh, bathing, doing anything, remember those each and every, each and every form of, or each and every part of Bhagwan. That's what we're supposed to do after coming into satsang. Because in the end, when we leave this body and when we go to Akshradham, it's only Bhagwan's form there. We won't see any of these social dealings. We won't be engaged in any other politics or businesses or anything like that. We'll only be engaged in Bhagwan's form. But if we practice here, then we would be able to do it there in Akshradham. But if we do not practice here, then it will not be possible there. And this does not have to, don't take it the wrong way, but this does not have to be where you have to sit in a secluded area and you have to close your eyes or you have to be completely alone to do it. Yeah, sure, for a little minimum time just for practice, maybe 20, 30 minutes in a day, that's fine. But this can be done while walking, talking, sleeping. If you develop that practice, if you develop that kind of zeal, to that I want to remember the form of Bhagwan, then it can be possible. In the same way, from off of this example, the question is what is pravrti? A pravrti or activity is to do or stay active in short. But Swami gave an example here, how should one stay active? by engaging in Kathavarta discourses, Kirtan Bhakti, and off of that, remembering the form of God. That is considered to be true Praruti, even in Nivruti, or even when you're not doing anything. Moving on. It's not about letting go of performing worldly duties. It's about learning how to perform it. We do everything. We, we know how to do everything. There's many, many skills that we know. But the proper certain technique that needs to be applied while doing that each and every activity, that is missing. That's lacking. If we remember Bhagwan while doing these activities, 
may it be his name, may it be his form, or may it be even a, a, a small paragraph or a sentence from the Vachnamrut. That's considered remembering Bhagwan. May it be a charitra of Bhagwan Swami Narayan that he has performed with his santos and bhaktos. That is considered remembering Bhagwan. If that's done while doing everything, then we are fulfilling this vat by Swami. If that's done while doing everything, Maharaj and Guruji are pleased. But if that's left out and everything else is done, then they may be pleased, but not just to a certain level. But while remembering God, if we do it, the activities, they become more pleased. That's why we have to learn this very method. Then Swami narrates a talk of Gordon Bay Shet, a story that I want to narrate to all of you. Once a devotee offered some sweets to Lord Swaminarayan. The Lord asked Gordon Bay Shet to feed him. Gordon Bay Shet started eating the sweets, saying, Oh Lord, please eat these sweets. Have more. Don't be shy in eating. Thus he was offering them to the Lord but actually he was eating them himself. The surrounding devotees were angered by his behavior. They scolded him and questioned what he was doing. To this, Lord Swaminarayan answered, His way of offering food to me is correct. He has no consciousness of his own self. He fed me and I have accepted it lovingly. My stomach is now full while he is still hungry. However, people still felt doubtful. So Lord Swamiran asked somebody to bring two dishes, one full of sugar and the other full of salt. Again, he, again the Lord asked Gordon Bay to feed him. Gordon Bay again took handfuls from these dishes alternately, put them in his mouth and asked the Lord to eat. Mara Jamo, Mara Jamo, like that. The Lord asked him, what is, which is the sugar and which is the salt? Gordon Bay replied, both are sugar because he is feeding Maharaj and not actually eating it himself. While saying this, he emptied the dish of the salt. Gordon Bay, Gordon Shet swallowed half a, half a kilogram of the salt. Seeing this, the people were shocked. They realized the high state of Gordon Bay Shet's devotion to Bhagwan. From this, we can understand that Gordon Bay Shet, throughout his activities, always remembered Bhagwan. And he was at such a high spiritual state that even if he ate salt, it seemed like sugar to him. I mean, if someone even consumed a hundred grams of uh, salt, then one would be in trouble in the form of running to the bathroom. But Gordon Beishet had a different level. He had a oneness with Bhagwan. He had a connection with Bhagwan. Due to that, even if he ate it, it still was not anything to him or did not seem like it was salt to him. Because he believed and knew and understood that it was Bhagwan inside himself that was consuming this not him or not his body that's why Bhagwan performed this charitra this lila of Gurdan Beshet keep your eyes on the goal meaning the goal is beholding Maharaj's murti and perform all other duties accordingly this is the true way of performing satsang moving on Swami also narrated the story of Paravatpai and how he was uh, actually plowing the field. And while plowing the field, he didn't have time to sit, so he decided to do Mansi Puja there while plowing the field. You know, usually we perform Mansi Puja by sitting down in one area so we can develop full concentration. But Paravatpai's level of uh, of elevation of uh, spirituality was very high so he didn't need to do this so while plowing he was uh, performing Mansi Puja he just held a little bit at that time stood stood there for a little moment and started performing the Mansi Puja and there in his Mansi Puja he was offering Bhagwan uh, 
bajri or millet bread and uh, dahi or yogurt. And while he was offering to Bhagwan, some other person came and kind of nudged Parvatpaya in the back. Kind of like, hey, why are you standing around? What are you doing? Right there and then, in Mansi Puja, Parvatpaya was there with Bhagwan. He was offering. And right there and then, due to that nudge, the concentration broke. And the bowl of yogurt and the bajri no rotlo fell to the ground. And there he was able to witness, oh, what what did happen? What what happened? How did this happen? Where did this come from? But Utbe said, I was performing Mansi Puja and you kind of broke my concentration. Due to that, this has fell on the ground. So from this, we can also understand that but Utbe was in worldly dealings. He was performing worldly duties. Yet, he was still engrossed and engaged in Bhagwan's idol. From this, we can also learn that even if we go to work, and suppose, you know, we have a desk job, for example, and we have to do a little programming. Every five minutes, if we have an idol of Bhagwan there, every five minutes we can, lord, we can look towards that idol and then go back to our work. Slowly but surely, that murti, that idol, will be engraved inside of our mind. So then even if we're not doing anything and sitting around, and if we remember Bhagwan's form, it can be easily remembered. Moving on. Those who perform the worldly duties while engaging their mind have led down the wrong path. All activities besides God-related ones are considered to be worldly duties. Vachanamrut Gadara, 1st chapter 22nd. If one does not remember God while singing to the accompaniment of a murtang sarangi or any other instruments, then that singing is as good as not having sung at all. How should one not perform pravurti or activities? By believing oneself to be the body instead of the soul. If one's mind becomes entangled in worldly duties, then one can detain and quarantine it by using gnan or spiritual knowledge. Meaning now this is the method of uh, getting out. If one becomes entangled in such kind of social dealings, um, worldly talks, all the above described, how to, how to come out of it? How to get out of it and go back into the form of God? That can be done through gnan or spiritual knowledge. If one has some form of spiritual knowledge or if one reads or if one gets it by associating with such a sadhu, then one will be able to cut all that down and go back to the form of God. But it can only be done by spiritual knowledge. There is no other method shown. It's called understanding. And everyone needs it as a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Just like how a boat cannot work without water, a human cannot live without performing worldly duties. But just make sure the water stays outside of the boat instead of coming inside, eventually sinking the boat. This is a very, very common phrase and example used. I'm sure all of you have heard of this. It's self-explanatory. But... A nice example that's given afterwards is that one time from this example is that Puja Guruji had a very big parain that he was performing, meaning Kathavarta, at a, in a village. And there, at the same time in his period of life, Puja Guruji was the chief executive officer of Vartal Mandir. And Due to that, he had many responsibilities and he was overlooking about 1,200 temples at one time. Now, due to that factor, there's many, many people who come, argue with him, and talk about things regarding uh, political things, regarding the mandir and whatnot. So there was this major case that was going on in that time that Puja Guruji had to uh, actually engage and talk into. And what happened was that 
the Parain time was scheduled in the morning. And just before Guruji was arriving <clears throat> in the car, he was talking regarding this matter, trying to deal with it, trying to diffuse the situation. And even when he reached the area and the Parain was about to start, he still had to engage in these worldly talks, political talks to diffuse the situation for the betterment of others because he had that responsibility at that time. He kept talking and talking. In 20 minutes, he talked regarding this matter. And then Guruji got out of the car, stepped into the Sabha Mandap, got on stage, performed his Dhanvats to Maharaj, sat on the Vyaspit, and started Katha. He performed Katha for two hours. And it seemed like <clears throat> for those who, santos who were not or with him were completely surprised. But for those devotees sitting in the Sava Mandap, they would not even know by any chance or even have a thought that Puja Guruji was managing 1200 temples at that time and I was actually engaged in a in a severe case situation where he had to hear, listen, talk about all these political talks. Yet, when he sat on the Vyaspid, from his words only Bhagwan Charitras flowed. Only Satpurusha's Charitras flew. Only God-related talks, Sadguru Gunatitan and Swamini Vato, the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan Swamiran's Charitras, Nan Santo Charitras, all these talks were said in the in the Parain. From this we can tell and determine that Pujaguruji is completely aloof from his mind. He may have to engage in from even the worldly perspective, from the naked eye, we can even see and determine that, oh, Look at how much Puja Guruji is engrossed in these talks. But in reality, do not ever make the mistake. For those who are actually close to Puja Guruji, for those male devotees especially, who engage with Puja Guruji, who talk with Puja Guruji, who may see Guruji often and see him talking on the phone or see him doing certain things, do not be so judgmental. But understand that Puja Guruji is completely aloof from his mind, uh, his, his indriyas, his senses, his body itself. And we can tell from this one charitra that how could someone talk for 20 minutes regarding political talks and then right after do the, chari do the kathavarta of Bhagwan? How can that be possible? How, even not even a single talk about any of that matter was included in Puja Guruji's Katha Parain. That's how much he is aloof from it. But due to the Agna of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, the Ekantik Satpurush comes on this earth and performs whatever duties he is commanded by Bhagwan and then leaves back up to Akshardham. No one ever knows or understands his spiritual state except for those who he wishes to tell or show. But this is actually a true prasang that happened. And from this we can understand that we can never judge the Akantik Satpurush, his kriya, his actions, because they're beyond the imagination, the comprehension of a mere small ant like human. He is a mountain, and we are mere just ants compared to him. Then think about Bhagwan, how he is, how great he is. So from this charitra, we can understand Guruji's spiritual state, not to the complete max, but at least a little bit, saying that we cannot be judgmental about his spiritual state and we can only, only fold our hands and just think of how great he is, how great he is, and how inferior we are. This is the true method of satsang. <clears throat> Moving on. <clears throat> if we perform such kind of duties 
by staying physically or by just doing them physically but remain mentally aloof then Bhagwan Swaminarayan will be pleased then his Ekantik Satpurush will be pleased and for that very purpose they would not be afraid of engaging us in such kind of worldly activities or they would not be afraid of putting us or giving us such kind of seva accounts because they have a certain trust that when I tell this person to stop then he will stop and go back into the form of Bhagwan. such kind of trust to get that from the Akantik Satpurush is the very reason for staying in this satsang because when we develop such kind of trust when our Satpurush develops such kind of trust within us then our moksha is guaranteed no matter what our life is in his hands and we know for a fact that this is what we want to do there's nothing else but his agna there's nothing else nothing else but to become his das this is what we want to do then that rajipo from his heart comes out so this is the true method of performing satsang again i'm going to read this talk one more time and then we'll end this yoga course for Sadguru gunatitan swami says perform worldly duties physically but remain mentally aloof and if they try to merge with the mind use spiritual wisdom to renounce them saying this my humble jay swami narayan